The Tang Nano 9K and 20K FPGA development boards have micro SD card slots. You can see a card in the Tang Nano 20K here. This video shows how to read and write micro SD cards using software running on a Pico RV32 Softcore assisted by a Verilog Spy Helper module. I added SD card support to my Pico RV32 mini system on a chip for the Tang Nano 9K and 20K boards. I've made several videos about the Pico RV32 and this mini SoC. See my Pico RV32 playlist for background information. Software sees SD cards as sequences of 512-byte blocks which are read or written all at once. So read a 512-byte block and write a 512-byte block are the key most basic SD card functions. But software must also initialize SD cards before they can be accessed. This initialization can be surprisingly, even fabulously, complex, but we will use only a very basic mode, SPY mode. This allows us to connect the FPGA to the SD card using the SPY bus protocol. So, the functions that software can use are initialize the SD card into SPY mode, read a 512-byte block, and write a 512-byte block. The connections between the FPGA and the micro SD card are just standard SPY signals. It's good to note the signal names. These connections are already on the Tang Nano 9K and 20K. You don't have to do anything other than insert an SD card into your board. Let's take a quick look at the system in action before diving into how this works. The system's running. We have a Tang Nano 9K connected to a Windows machine by USB. The 9K presents a USB serial port to the Windows computer, and the window you're seeing on the screen is TerraTerm connected to that serial port. So if I press the reset button on the 9K, it resets and prints something, saying um, enter HE for a list of commands. So let's do that. And we see some commands that start with S. So SI, SR, SW, and SX. And those are the ones that relate to the SD card support. The first thing you have to do is initialize the SD card. So I do an SI and that works okay. And then the SR command lets you read a block. So I can read block one, which is actually the second block. They start with zero. And you can see those values. So they were previously stored. Now, if I want to write that block, I, I can say SW1. And then the next parameter is like a counting starting point. So maybe I'll make it CCCC, one, two, three, four zeros. And so now if I read the block, it should have changed to have CCCC in front of everything. And so it did. So it looks like it's working fine. To see how this works, Let's take a very quick look at software. I won't go into all of it. In fact, I had ChatGPT write it. I had to fix several things, but ChatGPT was useful. You can look at the software on GitHub, link below. It's easy to see what must be done to initialize the card and read and write blocks. I want to focus on just one key part of the software. Functions that transfer 8 bits of data to the card while reading 8 bits as they do it. There are two versions of this function. SpyTransferB uses bit banging to send the bits in parameter B to the card while gathering eight response bits in reply. This software directly controls the clock and MOSI signals and directly reads the MISO signal. This is what is meant by bit banging. This is done using little helper functions like SpyMOSIHI. SpyMOSIHI sets bit 2 in a command register I implemented in Verilog. This sets the MOSI signal high. You can see some of the other bit banging functions on this page. Function spy transfer H does exactly the same thing as spy transfer B, but it does it with much more hardware support from the Verilog. This makes it faster and gives it much more consistent timing. To send the 8 bits in B to the SD card, this function just writes B to a transmit register. Hardware takes over and sends all 8 bits to the SD card while gathering response bits from MISO into the receive register. So, software writes B to SD spy TX rig to start the 8-bit transaction. Then it pulls a busy bit in the command register. When the hardware is no longer busy, software reads the reply bits from SD spy RX rig. This function lets me change which transfer function is in use. This lets me test both and lets us see the performance difference. Let's look at that now using an oscilloscope capture. We're running again, but this time we have the oscilloscope monitoring the four spy signals, and in particular we can use the chip select signal to see how long it takes to read or write a block. 
But first, I'm going to use SX to select the bit banging version of the transfer function. And now let's read a block. Let's read zero. And our oscilloscope has cursors, so I'll have to adjust the cursor to see how long that took. And that's about 156 milliseconds. And we can write that block. And we can see that that takes about the same amount of time. But now I'll do SX to go back to using the version of the transfer function where the Verilog does the 8-byte transfer. So we'll see how long that takes. We'll do an SR0 again, and you can see it's much faster. We'll adjust the cursors to get at least an approximate measurement of about 11.6 milliseconds. So quite a bit faster. We'll write that, and that takes about the same time. So you can see that having the Verilog do the 8-byte transfer does speed things up quite a bit. It would be less if the Tang Nano 9K were running at a faster clock speed. It's actually running at 9 megahertz now. But still, that Verilog helping of the spy transfer is a good thing. Before a quick look at the Verilog, here's a reminder of the programming model that the hardware I implemented provides to the software. Software starts an 8-bit transaction by writing a byte to the TX register. That causes the busy bit in the command register to go high. When the transaction is done, busy returns to low and software reads the reply bits from the RX register. The command register also has four bits to allow access to the spy signals, MISO, CS, MOSI, and CLOCK. Here's the GOIN IDE. We can check the version real quick. So there it is. And the repository has two GOIN project files, one for the Tang Nano 9K and one for the Tang Nano 20K. Right now I have a 9K connected, so I'll open that. And then here's all of the Verilog files in the project. The SD spy card support is here in this function here. And if I scroll down, we see lots of signals in the interface. And many of these are the standard interface signals that I use to integrate peripherals into the mini SOC. So for information about that, see my first video about the Pico RB32 core, and I'll put a link below. And if we scroll down here, um, let's see what's interesting. This part here determines which register is displayed on reads, but really the heart of this implementation is kind of right down here. So this variable bit count is the count of bits that are yet to be sent when something is written to the transmit register. If that count is zero, it means that there's no transaction going on. And this else um, is the significant part. And this is the area that allows writing registers. And so right here is the TX register. So you can see if a write is made to the TX register, bit count gets set to 16. And the uh, transaction process begins, you know, up, up in this part of the code here. And this is using time count to get the clock rate correct for the spy clock that we want. But other than that, it's really just going through and sending bits one at a time and, and shifting, shifting registers um, as bits get sent, shifting them both in and out. And so I won't try to go into every detail of this. You can look at this code on GitHub and study it at your leisure. I guess I could do a build real quick. I'll just change a character here to make it rebuild. Clicking this icon here starts both the synthesis and the place and route. So the synthesis is going. And perhaps and now we're doing the place and route. So that's almost done. Bitstream generation is complete. And so on Windows, the Go and Programmer works fine. So you just have to say save, it auto detects your, your FPGA, or, or at least the uh, USB interface to it to use to program. And then here you can either program SRAM or you can program the flash. So to program the flash, you change mode to embedded flash mode for the 9K, it's external flash for the 20K, and say save. And then if I click like this, it will actually program the flash of the FPGA so that the new image will stay in, in place even after a power cycle. During development, it's OK to just do it to the SRAM, and then it's, it gets lost at power cycle. But anyway, just a quick tip there about programming and, and to point out that on Windows, the Go and Programmer works fine. And while we're showing how to build, we might as well look at software. 
So here's the project directory, and you can see the project files for the 20K and the 9K. Software is in the directory called C code. And there's a make file there, but main.c is where the command interpreter is. And here are the files that do the SD card implementation. And to make, well, you can do a make clean, but all you have to do is type make 9K if you're on a 9K or 20K on a 20K. And that builds the image and also creates some Verilog. And that's why you have to build the software before you build the Verilog. So for this to work, of course, you need to have a tool chain installed. And you can see the readme files on the GitHub, and it'll give you some advice on how to install tool chains on, on Linux. And on Windows, I'm using Windows subsystem for Linux to get the Linux. So that's been working well for me. We have seen how to read and write SD cards on the Tang Nano 9K and 20K FPGA boards, and how to use some hardware assists to speed it up. See GitHub below for both software and Goen Verilog projects. I have many other videos that give background information on the Goen tools, the Pico RV32 Softcore, and my mini SOC. If you like, check them out. I'll end this video here. Thanks for watching.